as you said, because it's Cairo. Uh, sorry, I, I, I still have a similar question with uh, Professor Kuo. Um, I, I, I heard that you say that in the middle of the presentation, you said that uh, little invariant cannot show up, uh, cannot show this material have having a topological insulator phase. Uh, you say the Z2 invariant. Yes. When you calculate Z2 invariant, yes. you say the Z2 invariant is zero. It's means. zero in this case. So mean, uh, so uh, traditional no, no, we say Z2 invariant is zero means that this this is a topological non uh, topological trivial phase. This, uh, yeah. Um, okay. So you say that this this is not possessed by the spin orbital coupling. No, uh, the, the the important difference from conventional topological insulator. And here, topological crystalline insulator, is there is one extra crystal symmetry for uh, topological crystalline yeah. insulator. So the, the usual way to char char characterize topological insulated phase uh, fails. Because you, you have this extra, uh, extra symmetry. So, um, you, you mean this, uh, if we broken the mirror symmetry or special symmetry, we can broken this this topological crystal, right? Yeah, it will become trivial. So we cannot have a robust surface state? Uh, very good question. <laughs> uh, I think uh, people might wonder uh, how robust it might be. Okay. I, I would say uh, it still depends on uh, the fog gap it has. So yes, you uh, if if you break mirror symmetry in principle, uh, this phase should disappear. But I don't think it's that easy because it's still uh, protected by box box gap. Uh, uh, but I think this is still uh, still under study. I, I don't know how robust it uh, would be uh, for this system. But uh, in my uh, my opinion, okay, my opinion is that uh, if you just uh, break mirror symmetry a little bit, for instance, you can you can think of strength in your mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. in some way. So you you might uh, you might break certain mirror symmetry because you have two mirror planes. Mm -hmm. uh, from zero zero one surface, you have a uh, Y Z or X Z, but with strength, you might destroy one of the mirror symmetry. Yeah, uh, but uh, if you simply break one mirror plane, the consequence is just you break a pair of uh, zero plane. So you open gap, exactly. But uh, if the other direction, uh, the mirror symmetry is still preserved, then it's okay. But if you break all mirror symmetries, um, should I still call it topological phase or not? I, uh, I think this is still not a well studied. Uh, I mean that uh, it breaking a little bit uh, means if we dropping only one atom uh, to, break in the, break on, uh, to break the mirror symmetry, is that uh, break it? I, uh, I don't think in that, in that case, I, I don't think you will because its its sensitivity should be protected by uh, fog gap, but this is also an assumption. <laughs> um, what do you say? Um, yeah, I suggest. Yeah, I think we need to end the seminar. So oh, if it okay. So sounds just like an important a few, discussion, uh, but just so a we need to move okay. towards closing. Okay. Uh, I, I'll discuss okay. 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 We talk, sorry about that. Oh, okay. Just just a few uh, two two slides. Maybe. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one uh, important, uh, a significant feature for surface state that uh, uh, it has very interesting orbital character, as I draw uh, here, uh, it's different. There is a asymmetry uh, with respect.
respect to Iraq, Iraq port, right? Okay. Then how to uh, detect? And recently we performed, not not I performed, but my collaborator performed the SDM experiment. They try to uh, figure out the orbital texture of this uh, rock surface space. And uh, so uh, basically, um, well, this is just show uh, the sample is OK. Right? And uh, we have very uh, nice uh, match with this band structure uh, calculation. This is a DID um, curve. OK. And, uh, in SDM experiment, actually what we do is we try to make a quantum particle interference study. And this is a very useful tool uh, to analyze the character near a certain kind of constant energy in, uh, in your system, and also uh, uh, coherence factor effect in the, in the system. Um, the basic idea is very uh, simple, we just try to uh, collect uh, the information about uh, uh, the incoming wave and outgoing wave, the, the interference of the wave. Um, so given, as you can imagine, uh, given a uh, scattering uh, wave vector Q, uh, the density state of this Q is roughly, at the lowest order of equation, is roughly proportional to uh, the spectral wave of momentum k and uh, momentum k prime. That is k plus q uh, state. But this formula, of course, ignores several <laughs> coherence factor effect and quantum, uh, some, uh, some uh, spin textual uh, effect. So uh, actually, this is not a formula we use, but this is uh, uh, this is a simple way to think about uh, the, the induced density Induce local density state. Okay, but uh, we use, uh, but it turns out we, we will use a uh, standard two measures formula to study that. And from the experiment, actually, what we study is we, we focus on a certain region and then we take its DIDV map and make a Fourier transform uh, uh, to uh, a Q space. And this can be compared with theoretical uh, calculation, which uh, confuse impurity induced local density state. Okay, and uh, well, this is some example I skipped. Uh, if you are familiar with quantum particle interference, uh, let me show you the final. This is the final slide. Uh, so in this experiment, uh, what we find is uh, very clear uh, when the energy is above the rock point. Oh, this is the Van Hoek. Set of, uh, the energy above, above um, the settled point. Uh, and this is the energy um, below uh, the settled point, um, the settled point uh, of the lower cone. And what you see is the quasi particle interference pattern. This is actually DIDV map transform into Q space, you see very uh, different features, okay? Uh, as you can see, here the signal are uh, strongly suppressed, okay? And this is uh, actually uh, uh, indicates that there is an untrivial orbital uh, texture in this system. And you can imagine in this way, um, for each Dirac hole, uh, as you can see, when uh, your uh, energy is uh, above, okay, above the rock point, so here. So you see, this is the cone around around x. Okay, this is the cone around x. And this is the cone around y. And above the rock point, the scattering is between PZ orbital. And with non-magnetic impurity, uh, you can expect they can uh, scatter with each other. However, when the constant energy is below the rock point, okay, but they do have different orbital character, px, py. But with usual uh, uh, spherical type, non-magnetic impurity, it's very difficult to uh, scatter from px to py orbital. 
So that's why when your energy is below the rock point, uh, you get this suppressed uh, signal. But uh, above the rock point, you can have a stronger uh, signal. So this is this asymmetry phenomena uh, indicate strongly uh, the optical uh, texture of this surface. So I think uh, time's out, so I'll stop here. And thanks for your attention. There was a lot of discussions already. Is there a question? First of all, you have to find out uh, the parity <coughs> operator for that full band system. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, <coughs> full band system, of course, you can describe in, in terms of four by four Dirac matrices, and you have to check each uh, Dirac matrices, uh, which may be have difference only under the vertical symmetry and angular symmetry. And here, gamma zero is actually even under both symmetries. Converge, uh, and, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, if you identify uh, this uh, as your parity, uh, uh, parity operator, then your parity eigenvalue So the parity eigenvalue uh, for this state here will give you uh, will give you say uh, will give you a minus minus uh, if you act on this band, okay, you will get this, okay. But uh, but. If That the people is that you can identify that the parity operator is the gamma ratio. Oh yes. Um, yeah. And um, okay, I, I think we're grossly over time, so I have to cut in. And, uh, looks like you you guys. Can continue the discussion, but actually, I still have a fundamental question here. I, I don't get it how this gamma zero can be the parity operator, and also the form is not. Th this whole thing is a uh, two spatial dimension, right? Uh, no, three spatial. But it's not in a Dirac invariant way. Your psi dagger gamma zero psi, if you say that's the mass term, then gamma zero is not the parity operator. As far as you know, I'm a particle theorist, so. so anyway, when you, from the beginning I uh, didn't quite understand. Secondly, you say in the second half of your talk, is it 2D spatial dimensions or 3D spatial dimensions? Uh, actually, I should say, I consider 3D material, but uh, surface model, so but they they have a surface view. So, so the surface, surface model surface should should be two dimensional. Right. Okay. Two but dimensions. but uh, it's it's the spin orbit interaction between the surface model. Spin orbit interaction? No. Spin orbit interaction uh, is is three dimensional. On page 17, you have the, the 
orbital, uh, you, you have the Pauli matrices. So that, that I, I find confusing. This is for two dimensional. Yeah, okay. Here's so this is simply for uh, surface set. Okay, anyway, since I'm the chair, I ask my little question. Um, I guess there's a lot of expertise, both from the speaker and a few people in the audience. Sounds like a good thing for you to continue the discussion, right? Uh, unless there are student questions. Not many students this time. If not, let's thank the speaker and we'll leave it to the, the workers to, <laughs> to hack it out, okay? So let's uh, say thank, thank you, Professor Tiger.